Okay, so Avonmore Protein Milk are teaming up with Dublin footballer Brian Fenton and Kilkenny hurler Owen Murphy to launch the new Avonmore Pro Oats product. Fenton and Murphy, who have nine All-Ireland Championship medals between them, were representing the Gaelic Players Association, of whom, along with the GAA, Avonmore Protein Milk are a long-standing supporter. As you can see, Owen Murphy is with us now. Owen, congratulations, county champions, Glenmore. I presume it's been one hell of a week. Yeah, Owen, well, listen, thanks a million for having me on. Uh, yeah, it's been a great few days, to be honest. This is uh, yeah, a nice way to finish off the week as well, just coming up, getting a, getting a trip back to, to Crow Park and that as well. But um, no, listen, uh, brilliant celebrations. And uh, yeah, thankfully, we don't win too much now, to be honest. Yeah, so this was the Intermediate Championship. How, how long had you been in the Intermediate for? So we got relegated in 2005, back out of senior. Right. Um, yeah, so it's been, it's been that long, 16 years. And, um, you know, we, we spent a year in junior in between that then as well, Owen. So, um, look, we, we've been building for the last couple of years and uh, we, we've we've a huge amount of young players that have, you know, shown huge amount of ability, have played um, schools level at a really high level and have, you know, played at um, inter-county level, minor 20s and, and that as well. So, uh, but it's only so long, I suppose, that you can class a team as young. And uh, yeah, so look, there's no better time to win something than now. Do you know what I mean? So um, yeah, look, we, we, we've enjoyed it for a few days. We haven't got word just yet of when we're going back. and um, But uh, we're looking forward to it. And we'll give the Leinster Championship a crack as well. How does a week like this compare to winning an All-Ireland with Kilkenny and the sort of national and obviously county-wide story that that is and the madness of it all? Mm. Look, to be honest... Um, it means much, much more simply because, look, for as long as I can remember, I, I've been down in our pitch at home and uh, my mom has washed the jersey. She's chairperson at a camogie um, club at home. My dad has been chairperson. He fixes the hurls. My brother makes the hurls. Uncle makes the hurls. We just have a huge connection with the club. And, um, you know, we, we are a, a tight bunch then as well. And, um yeah, just, you know, there was a huge, huge sigh of relief. I was beaten in five intermediate semifinals up till when we won um, our semifinal a couple of weeks ago. And, um, you know, we, we've never just fell over the line at that stage. So there was just a huge sense of relief getting over the semifinal. And we, look, we we discussed it, uh, I suppose, among ourselves, look, that these would be the best days of our lives, like, um, if we could pull this off and, um, you know, uh yeah, like, you know, and to, and to enjoy it as well, sort of to express it, because you can get to a final and, you know, you can be, you know, caught up in the moment and maybe forget how big of an occasion it is. And I think um, I think you just, yeah, you need to take a step back and realise that these don't come around too often. And uh, look, we, we had a bit of a slow start. First 15 minutes, we were sluggish, we were six points down. And um, yeah, we, we, we just started turning the screw then. Lads stepped up to the plate big time. And yeah, just everyone, it was just a huge amount of emotion afterwards, to be honest. How does your role for the club differ to <laughs> your role for the county? Is there any sort of Shane Curran style making runs up the pitch or anything like that? Yeah, no, 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 no. I'm 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 the centre back calling everyone back, so I don't yeah. get to do too much marking. Uh, I know I'm I'm playing centre back in my club now for yeah. the last couple of years, and I've always played off fields from a club owner, to be very honest. So, um, right. yeah, look, and I, I I'm happy happy enough with that. I can feel I can you know can contribute to to uh to our game out the field and that as well and. Um, yeah, look, I, I, I play absolutely anywhere. And I've always said that, like, in Kilkenny, and I know it's sort of a bit of a cliche thing, but, you know, for uh, from when I was knee-high, three, four years of age, whatever age it was, and we were hurling out in our, in our lawn, or as we call it, the little pitch outside at home, you know, you just play anywhere at all, and you just love playing hurling. And at the end of the you know, at the end of all that, like, you know, I know everybody enjoys playing it, but, you know, you can't beat winning then after that. And, um, you know, so look, yeah, it's, it's been a great week all around. It's not exactly a great hiding place if you're coming from between the sticks to go out to centre back. Like it's like the, as, as important a position as there is. So, um, like, I mean, the, the, that's obviously something that I guess underlines the modern yeah. hurling goalkeeper, right? That like, I mean, the, 
just top class hurlers in between the sticks these days. Yeah, look, and to be fair, on um, I think the last couple of years, the fact that there's been a split season and that has helped me hugely. Like, I think right. it's hugely beneficial for a club player anyway because at least they have a defined season. They know exactly when they're going to be playing, not just when the intercounty team gets bet into championship. Which I think, like, how long is a piece of string? You just don't know. So, um, you know, from from my point of view, um. You know, I, I'm back, I'm training, I'm training as an outfield player. So that sharpness and that, you know, um, it, being able to read the game, that helps me because I get a, you know, a, a set period of time playing out the field, playing um, playing with the boys in that position. As you said, it is a pivotal position. But then also the way the Kilkenny Championship used to run before, back maybe three, four years ago, if we played a Leinster game, we would have a club game the week afterwards. And that was way the, that, that was just the way the league was ran. And, um, you know, I used to find that extremely hard because, you know, you're going from a, a four or five week block playing in the goal and training in the goal. Everything is veered to, you know, my set position with Kilkenny and, you know, I'm going back out and trying to play midfield, centre back, centre forward, wherever we used to be playing with my club. I used to find that hard in a one week window. Um, do you know, so yeah, it, it suits me. Suits me the last couple of years the way it's been been run off. And uh, look, as you said yourself, the fact that I'm in a you know a very privileged position playing with Kenny, being an intercounty player, you know, we, we have to be leaders for a club, and you know, be shown to be doing the right things as well. So like the fact that I can, you know, be performing somewhat and driving on lads around me, that's that's a huge plus as well from um, from the position I'm in with Kenny, you know. If we could just talk about goalkeeping for, for a minute then, Owen, because it, it does, it, it really seems to have been a talking point over the last couple of years, how people like yourself and, and Nicky Quaid have really upped the bar completely. It's almost gone in tandem with football, where the goalkeeping is, is definitely some of, some of the, I guess, most uh, innovative and, and high quality that we've seen ever in the game. Like, what, what, Why is that, do you think? What, what's the sort of work that you've put in and, and the sort of innovations that you've brought to your game that's allowed this, this increase in standard to happen? Well, you know, I, I always found that I was really comfortable on the ball anyway, Owen, because of my playing days out the field with with with, with Glenmore and with the college when I was in WIT. And um, yeah, so I just found that I I was really comfortable on the ball. But I think now if you're not, if if you're not used to being on the ball and um shown for the ball in particular, it's it's an extra outlet for the backs. Uh, and then how you distribute the ball when you're in play, like when you're in possession. So be it from restart, be it from play, like it's hugely important now. Um, where look, if, if you can retain possession, primary possession, like I, that's half the battle. The other team then have to work twice as hard to get it back off. Like so, um, and that's the way teams are playing now. It's it's you know, and I think Limerick have probably redefined the possession game as well. Um, in comparison to the Cork team back in, say mid early noughties, three, four, five, and six, that that area, but where it was might be in a little bit more of a hand passing sort of running game. Limerick have very similar, but it's 30, 40 yard drilled passes to players. Uh, and as I said, they just redefine that. And Nicky Quaid is, you know, uh, I, I said in an interview a couple of years ago, Nicky Quaid is, has been one of the best goalies in the game for the last, I don't know how many years, and probably didn't get the recognition he deserved at that time because, look, Limerick weren't winning all earns. They weren't winning monsters at that stage. And uh, he's getting his due rewards now, absolutely. Um, you know, and I think teams, if they're coming up against Limerick, like obviously there is a couple of key players that you have to pinpoint and you want to maybe... Um, uh, have a game plan to counteract them and Nicky is certainly one of those he's, 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 he's definitely the best there at the moment and that's been really evident in terms of what you mentioned there the, the understanding that you have of the outfield mm. positions the, the contribution to open play but the, the, the basics seem to have gone up a notch as well the shot stopping like from your own perspective then is that something that you're constantly working on is, is there drills that you do to try and keep your sharpness because like pardon the pun but it, it, there are cat-like reflexes quite often from your own perspective in big moments and big matches yeah look and I think um you know everybody's knowledge of strength and conditioning now I think has probably 
it allowed me, even though I'm into my thirties now, to to stay what I feel I, I feel physically now probably in the best shape that I've I've ever felt I've been in, even in my mid twenties. And I know what works for my body now. And obviously Mickey Comfort coming in then the last couple of years, introducing a few more uh, things to to your strength and conditioning programs, your off season programs as well. On that helps hugely. So um, you know, yeah, like I, I think there is the stuff that you do in the off season, the stuff you do in between your sessions as part of your gym programs like that ad, adds something to it um but in training yeah look um yeah we, we're constantly working with darren brennan and you know james mcgarry and that too and um you know and you're trying to um go through drills that you feel might be like game like scenarios but look you know there's only so much that you can replicate in that regards too at the end at the end of it look it's it's you know sometimes you just you, you guess that split second you know, um, you guess correctly, and, and mm. it, it is it, like it's it's such a it, it's such a small margins. Like you know, you take the penalty, some of the top players, and they're taking a shot from twenty one yards out, and um, you know, and I can I can try turn around and read Aaron Glan's shot. I can try read Patrick Horgan's, whoever it may be that's going to be taking a penalty, and you know, if he throws a half a dummy and goes the other side you look like a fool but like if i guess the right way you know it's it's your your you're a genius sort of thing so it's very very small margins to be honest uh, and would you be watching patrick horgan take penalties on video before that all-ireland semi-final yeah 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 you would you would um you know and similar enough a couple of years ago in the semi-final against limerick um you know i would have watched um aaron glan taking some of them as well that day he threw me the wrong way so you know i i just looked like a bit of a bit of a clown at that stage but um look that's just the way it goes and and that's what you have to do but like if you take it any of the backs or whatever it is they're going to be looking at forwards individual clips and um seeing exactly what is their favorite side or you know what way did he did he like a ball coming in and um what we you know i suppose does he not like the defender attacking the ball um you know so everybody goes into that finer detail now we, we have access to a bundle of information now between video clips and as i mentioned strength and condition nutrition everything so that's where everything is just going to going to the next level and if you're not taking that on board i think you're going to be left behind uh, Arthur O'Dea, who works with us at a piece with Colm Callanan and James Gettle over the last uh, couple of days, and uh, Colm Callanan was telling the story about this Christy O'Connor drill. I'm not sure if you fell victim to this as well, but he said he had to, to stop the car and pull over for a while uh, after training it to down a couple of bottles of Lucas 8 Sport. Such was the reddening he got off Christy O'Connor, to put it in, in Christy's own words. Is that the level of drills that you're being subjected to in training as well? <laughs> yeah, look, I may have a chat to Colm about that and see what he passes <laughs> on that drill. But uh, yeah, it would be. It would be. And, right. you know, you train. Like, How does now, that actually happen? Like, what, what, what is the drill? Well, that particular drill, I haven't seen the clip now, so I may look back over it. I've sort of been offline now um, for the last couple of days, but uh, yeah, no, I look back on it. But like we, we, we do re reaction drills as well, where you have a bundle of maybe 20 balls, about 20 plus yards from goal. And, you know, as soon as you as soon as you you save one or there's a shot taken, you're taking a step out to it. So by the time, you know, you're getting down to the last letter, it's probably only 10, 12 yards. And like, obviously you have to cover the angles behind you and the goal. You just have to, you know, know where you're on the pitch um, at any one time. And that's that's one of my favorite ones as well. And it's just pure reaction drill. If it hits off you, it hits off you. Um, do you know what I mean? You just, you have to get used to that. And, um, you know, that's, that's it, it's like the tackling drills and training that, that the outfield players are doing as well. They're just condition themselves to to game like scenarios to be honest i presume you're long past the point of taking any notice of taking a belt of a slitter even on a cold night yeah well even on a cold night no listen <laughs> any 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 goalkeeper that tells you he doesn't think about uh getting a <laughs> of, uh, of a slitter on a cold january night now he's definitely lying i can tell you that but uh no listen uh yeah it, you, you would be you just you, you do get used to it um look it's much easier to take one during the summer than it is in the winter i'll tell you that there has to be a madness though there as well though and i'm sure like where you kind of just compartmentalize whether it's going up for a high ball or bursting out of the defense with the ball in your hand or shot stopping there has to be a sense of you know what i need to put my body on the line here regardless as, as a goalkeeper absolutely and do you know what sometimes you just don't even think of it like because a lot of the things are so instinctive like if you take that split second to think about maybe what you're you're doing like the, the process of it like that split second is too late and 
Um, yeah, so it, it, it's, you know, you're, you're just trying to expose yourself and train and look back to that. And honestly, I, I am a believer. You, you train um, the way you want to play, like, and like how you play on the day then will, will be as a result of how you've trained over the last, however many couple of months, couple of weeks or whatever it is between games and things like that as well. So, um, yeah, I, I'm a big believer of that. And how do you see the role of the goalkeeper changing over the next little while? Is there going to be more influence, do you think, uh, on your role? Um, I, I think it, it's probably getting to a stage now where maybe from, from a hurling goalkeeping point of view is whether we're going to take the next step to the likes of Niall Morgan and... Um, you know, and those guys who, who are basically like the fly keepers in the football, um, you know, and you see it in the Ulster final here, it was it, it just the amount of bravery, I suppose you could call it. But uh, again, they, they're, they're so comfortable being on the ball and coming out and taking these balls in as well, confident in their own amount of ability. So maybe, I don't know, is that the next step in hurling goalkeeping? But the thing is, you know, if you get whoever will say in the half back line of, of the opposition team, you know, they're going to drive the ball 90 yards. So if you're anyway off your line, like they'll just, they'll be able to score a goal. So um, yeah, uh, I, I'm not so sure on that. It's an interesting one. Mm. Look, and um, you know, I suppose when I first came in, I would have been asking about the sharp puck outs. What were you feeling of it? Uh, what, what do you think of it? And I think now it's just an acceptance that you have to be, you know, apt at, at taking sharp puck outs and um, being confident in your own ability to take sharp puck outs and your own players' abilities, your teammates' abilities, sorry, um, for taking the puck outs as well. Like that, that's a given now. But you know, back 2011, 12 or 13 would have been my first year and I was asked about it. And, you know, and I said, yeah, yeah, I, I, I don't mind giving a sharp puck out. Is it only a 20, 30 hour pass? Like, and, you know, and that was a thing for a couple of years. But now, as I said, it's just, yeah, it's a given. You have to do it. Yeah, there'll be centre-backs playing in goals for every team before long. <laughs> um, you have been listening to uh, Kilkenny's Owen Murphy, who's teamed up with Avonmore Protein Milk to launch the new Avonmore Pro Oats products. Uh, Murphy who and uh, Brian Fenton, who we'll be talking to later on as well, have nine All-Ireland Championship medals between them and they were representing the Gaelic Players Association, of whom, along with the GEA, Avonmore Protein Milk, are a long-standing supporter. Owen, congratulations again on last weekend. Best of luck now with the, the rest of the winter and into next year. Thanks a million. Owen, cheers. Thanks a million.